Greetings, all. Welcome to an earlier stream than normal. I normally don't stream this early, but you know what? Sitting around in my house, I'm not doing a whole lot. I am tired. <laughs> I'll, I'll admit, my, my beard's a mess. I'll admit, I'm, I got up out of bed at like 12.30, 1 p.m. today. I know. Naughty boy. But you know what? It's pandemic. I have nothing to really get up for today. Nothing's really happening until later in the day. Most people who need me for calls or business-related things, I talk to them at nighttime because they're all in America. So what am I going to do? Stream time. Let's go. I got a, a beautiful cup of coffee with me. Oh, what's that? What brand of coffee are you drinking, Sean? Well, only the best coffee in the world, top of the morning coffee.com. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I normally don't stream this early as well, so anybody who misses the streams uh, later in the day, hopefully you can catch one now on a fucking Monday of all times. Yeah, good job. Good job, me. Good job, me. Um, but also, we don't do just chatting streams really all that much. And look, I can turn on notifications now like that. Woo. Uh, I haven't done a just chatting stream in a while, so it's nice to just... Have a cup of coffee, hang out, just chill, you know, be nice and, well, this music is not chill, but to me it is. So I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're all having a fantastic Monday. Uh, Steph, thank you so much for the five gifted subs. That's very nice. Thank you, Steph. What a legend. Saul. Beth Ellen, thank you for the sub. I think that's how I read your name. Uh, Minty Sophie, thank you for the sub. Camp, thank you for the sub. Q4MP, I don't know how else to read that. Haha, -ha, thank you for the prime. Uh, Lauren, thank you for the 100 bits, as always. Nice start to my Monday. Good to see you, Lauren. Good to see you. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for coming out, guys. Thanks for coming out. Good to see you. Uh... Jamilia? I, I'm so sorry if I pronounce your names wrong ever. Because some of you probably have very nice names and I, monkey brain, just don't know how to say them. And then I always see people go on Twitter and be like, lol, he pronounced my name this way. And I'm like, god damn it again. <laughs> well, thank you for the five gifted subs. Uh, that other guy, thank you for the five gifted as well. Grodzilla Tiger, thank you for the two gifted. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Monkey brain high IQ? No, monkey brain collapsed brain. We got some collapsed brain septic eye emotes. Use those. Small brain, no brain. Stupid brain. Stinky brain. Uh, Squiddy Guest, thank you for the sub. Problem with it, thank you for the prime. Lillian, thank you for the sub. See, my goal with these streams and playing Bloodborne music in the background of them is that I want it to be... So that anytime anyone hears Bloodborne music, they associated with Jacksepticeye. So I can be associated with absolute sheer talent and greatness. Because I think it is one of my favorite soundtracks of all time. It's phenomenal. Valendiel, thank you for the prime. Trashy, thank you for the gifted. A, A Cloud, thank you for the gifted. Clefefera, thank you for the two months. Dragon, thank you for the prime. Mutt, thank you for the prime. Look! If Fiverr Jesus pronounced my name as Spadicey, then you're just gonna have to handle, uh... Twitch Jesus. I can't even have that moniker, because that's Charlie. You're just gonna have to handle Irish Jesus, uh, pronouncing your name wrong. PB Man, thank you for the two months. Spence, thank you for the sub. Dior's Cook, thank you for the sub. BCG, thank you for the sub. Sotoya, thank you for the prime. Oh my god, there are 500 million of you. That's a lie. But thank you for the sub. Sam, thank you for the five gifted. Lisa Finia, thank you. Lisa Fiena, thank you for the gifted sub. I'll try. I'll try. But sometimes I just say, hey, Moon, thank you for the sub. Even though their name is Moon Kilometers, you know, it's just to keep the efficiency going. You know, it's the streamer tactic. It's what we do. We're very good at reading things out at a whim. Sammy for the sub. DJ for the prime. Chubby for the prime. 
Oh my god, there are so many. I'm sorry that I'm missing half of them. But hey, look, your names are down there now. Just gobble you up. I am trash, thank you for the five gifted. Appreciate you, appreciate you. Welcome, welcome. Ah, oh, bleeding! Thank you so much for the three months in a row. Moon Jelly Power, thank you for the sub. I'm rewatching Spider-Man Homecoming, because why not? Why not indeed? It's so good. I, I would love for a tiny bit more web swinging through neighborhood Spider-Man. I feel like that's something that the new Spider-Man movies are really missing. If you think about it, Homecoming and Far From Home, they have very little Peter swinging through New York, which is like the quintessential Spider-Man thing. Um, th they still have incredible stories um, and really fun characters, and it helps out a lot. But if you think back to the Sam Raimi Spider-Mans, or even the Amazing Spider-Man with Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone, even though they are two of my favorite actors ever, um, and I used to have a big crush on Emma Stone for a long time, but <laughs> that's irrelevant. Just a little, just a little factoid about Jack Sab, the guy here. <laughs> um, but even those movies had like really great scenes of Peter swinging through the city. Um, the Amazing Spider-Man movies are garbage for a Spider-Man movie. Actually, they're <sighs> the Spider-Man aspects of them are are fine. It's the Peter Parker segments that are kind of shitty. Um, and Andrew Garfield, God bless him, he tried his best. He's a phenomenal actor. But he cannot polish a shit script. But, um, they have some really great segments. Like, the Sam Raimi movies are so good. They have so many segments of Spider-Man just, like, swinging through the city. Like, they give you that, like, 20, 30 seconds of Peter doing his thing through the city, which is exactly what people want to see. But the Homecoming and Far From Home movies don't have that. They don't have Peter just swinging through the city. And I'm hoping that the next one does. They have, like, really cool Spider-Man fight scenes with him, with, um, Mysterio at the end of Far From Home, where he's, like, dodging shit with the Peter Tingle and stuff like that. That's cool. That's some, that's some Spider-Man-ass shit right there. Fucking spider-ass, man-ass, drinking coffee-looking ass. That's cool. But I want swinging Spider-Man. Fuck is that music? Yeah, this one is a bit too much. I watch every Avengers movie this weekend. Fuck yeah. You know what? Even Age of Ultron is not that bad. People give Age of Ultron some shit. Um, but it's got... What's his name? James Spader? Is that his name? Yeah. He's doing the voice of Ultron. And let's face it, I could listen to James Spader all day. He's the fucking Lizard King. He played, um... What was his character in... Wait, I can remember. Um, Robert? California. Is that his name? From The Office? Maybe not Robert. Am I right? Am I wrong? Am I, am I getting it completely? Robert California? Da -da -da! Yeah, Robert California. What a fantastic character. The Lizard King. And his voice is just so enrapturing. Ugh. It's like listening to someone... It's like... Buttering a nice warm croissant. Or a nice crumpet. It's like the audible version of that. Oh, so good. I could listen to him all day. I wish I had a buttery, smooth, soft voice like that. I'm the fucking Lizard King. He has other characters, of course. Um, but I've never watched Stargate, so I don't know. Um, Cassie, think of the five gifted. But he does Ultron, and it's like... Oh, yes. I love that. Can somebody tell me what a crumpet is, please? <laughs> a crumpet! What would be the actual definition of a crumpet? What is crumpet slang for? Oh. A sexually attractive woman? No. I'm not talking about buttering that kind of crumpet. Um, are crumpets bad for you? I mean, any sort of dough in excess is bad for you. They're just like a, 
an English muffin. A crumpet is a small griddle cake. Apparently. Um, but they're like a British thing. Horrible for trypophobia, good for the hunger. They're delicious. Put some uh, butter on those, or even better, clotted cream. Ooh! Mamma mia! Now you've got yourself a party in your mouth, and everyone's invited. I love them. I love them. A great brekkie, a great snacky. Any time of day, if you want to put those in your mouth, put it on top of the morning coffee. Oh! Clotted cream sounds disgusting. It sounds like something you shouldn't be eating, but if you taste it, Oh, you will see the eyes of God for sure. What is clotted cream? Oh my God. Let's look up the actual definitions of it, because I don't- I can't explain it. Clotted cream is a thick cream made by indirectly heating full cream cow's milk using steam or a water bath. It's basically just cream. But it tastes slightly different and it's good. Put it on a scone? Ho. Oh. Ho. Oh. Silver, you're a scone man yourself. That's absolutely fine. Scones are also, ooh. Or as you Americans would call them, biscuits. You know, you get some biscuits and gravy. Not really the same ingredients, but it's kind of the consistency of a biscuit. Kind of kind of like that dance sort of like like doughy sort of feel. And you mop up your gravy with it. Now we put, we put butter on them over here, darling. Um, But it's fucking delicious. Oh. Spoiled cream. I mean, we do eat sour cream. Like, that sounds fucking gross. Cream is one of those things that can be either godly, or it can go horribly wrong very quickly. And taste like absolute feces. But... Souring it to eat it? I mean, we also eat cheese, and that's basically just fucking gone off hard milk. <laughs> but it's so good! Blue cheese is basically just eating mold. And it's so good! And if you don't like cheese, then I don't even want to know your face. I love a good cheese. I used to hate cheese when I was younger. My brother would come back from France um, and bring back some, like, really stinky cheeses. Which, by now standards, were not that stinky. Like camembert and some brie, and then I think he had a blue cheese at one point, and I was like, Ugh. No, how can you eat that? You're disgusting. And now I'm an adult and I'm like, oh, fucking load me up with cheese until I fart back out a goat. Vegan, goat cheese, great cheese. Evelyn introduced me to goat cheese properly. Oh. Let's talk about food now. <laughs> but I'm lactose intolerant. Okay. You can be excused from class. That's fine. You have a note from home. That's okay. I let that slide. Look, if you don't like if you don't like cheese, it's fine. I don't feel like I have to. I feel like the people who watch me know when I'm joking and being sarcastic. I'm Irish. Half of what I say is pure sarcasm. I should not be taken at face value at all. Remember Doki Doki Literature Club? Of course. Isn't he working on something else? Coffee is food? It is if you don't uh, pour water through the beans. If you just eat the beans, then it's food. <laughs> Jack is the head teacher teaching his millions of kids. Please, no. I... I don't want to think about school. Got some melted Colby Jack on a sandwich. Oh, fuck yeah! Give me some cheese. You know, sometimes it's fine with just a nice cheddar, you know? You know, cheddar's like the... Cheddar's like the basic bitch cheese. And you're like, nah. Yeah, everyone kind of likes cheddar. And it's kind of on everything, so you kind of get bored of it, so you want something extra spicy, you want something more exotic. So you start, like, dipping into, like, blue stiltons. Some fucking Gouda. Gouda's not that exotic, but it sounds exotic. 
But then sometimes you come back and it's like, ooh, a pizza with cheddar on it is actually pretty dope. That, now that's, that's a taste I could get into. Ooh, Gouda was my favorite cheese for a while. And it also happens, or it's also lucky that I'm dating a, a Dutch lady as well, so now when we go there, <laughs> whenever we can again. <laughs> There's a fantastic cheese place in Amsterdam that I really want to go into whenever we get a chance to go back. I think I was in it when I was on tour with the Grumps for Ready Player 3, but I don't think I've been in it since I started dating Evelyn. Um, and it's, it's just wall-to-wall -wall cheese wheels. And I want it. I'm gonna go in and buy a whole wheel. A whole, a whole wheel! As my Irish accent would say. Tall Dutch queen. Oh, a goddess. I simp. I simp so hard. She's streaming now as well. And I, I forgot she was streaming today. Um, because I forgot it was Monday. And I was on a, a call getting something delivered. And she already started streaming, but I, I like... Okay, get... <laughs> We're already cheesy here. Let's get a little cheesier. Uh, before we record or before she streams or something, we always like to, to give each other a little kiss beforehand. Just be like, go get him. Go get him. Have fun. And I forgot that today. So I went up and gave her a little kiss. It's whatever, guys. I simp. Uh, Noob Slayer, think of the 50 bits. Drink straight ginger beer. Okay. I keep going back like this, relaxing, when I'm not in focus. I need to, like, stay straight up. Jack Simptic guy? Hey, I'll take that moniker. I love how Simp has become such a, like... Like, some people are actually afraid of doing something in case they're called a Simp. Like, that word has no power at all. Why are you afraid of that word? Be a simp. It's good to simp for people. It's good to support people. Be a fucking simp. Just don't be a simp for everything, you know? Be a simp for your friends. Be a simp for your loved ones. Support them. Kiss them in the mouth. <laughs> Just kiss your dad square in the lips. Whatever. It's like whenever anybody's like, ha ha simp, it's like, <laughs> you have no power here. <laughs> uh, po possibly. Thank you for the two gifted. Snowfall, thank you for the sub. John, thank you for the prime. Blue, thank you for the two months. Upside down smiley face emoji, thank you for the 500 bits. <laughs> oh, isn't that a pain in the ass to have to type in anytime you want to log in and you're logged out? You're like, oh, fuck. It was so funny when I made the name. Now I have to type in like 400 letters. I have that with Jack Septicai. Like, Jesus Christ. I have to put in my email for anything. I'm like, ah! Why are there so many letters? <laughs> Will you stream more Ghost of Tsushima? Nah. We we played some more of the multiplayer in our spare time. And it's, it's really fun, but it's not really great for streaming, I don't think. It's more of a, like, I want to turn off my brain and hang out with my girlfriend kind of game. Not that I couldn't do that on, like, a stream or something, but it's... I don't know. Feels like we kind of tapped the potential out of it. When you play Minecraft? I don't know. I keep wanting to get back into it, but I keep putting these, like, hurdles in my way. For no reason. Because the next thing I have to do in it is go get the Elytra. In the end city. And that's going to be fun, but... For some reason, I think it's going to be harder than it is, and I did this with the Elder Dragon as well. I didn't go back and fight the Elder Dragon, because I thought, oh, I'm going to have to prepare, and it's going to be so hard. And then I got in and beat it in, like, ten minutes first try. I'm like, oh. So I should just get back into it. I really want to be able to build, like, a server for people. Um, for, like, friends. I always see, like, the offline TV people on their server, and, like, the SMP servers that people have. I'm like, oh, I kind of want that for friends to, like, do something with. Or a, a server where people can get on and build. I remember Dan, RT Game, doing stuff like that. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I want to try that out. 
Um, like Mr. Beast has been doing build competitions there as well on Minecraft. I'm like, oh, that's the f that stuff's fun, and I should. I just always feel like when I when, if I'm to do Minecraft stuff, I feel like I have to accomplish something in it. Because I, I would hate the idea of getting into an episode and doing nothing, just wandering around and doing nothing. And I have had some episodes like that, but it was like furthering the story and furthering my base. But now that I beat the dragon, I'm like, oh, I don't really know where to go and what to do. Just playing the OTV server with Saikuno and gang. I mean, I'd love to, but again, I'm not as well versed in Minecraft as a lot of people are. Even after playing so many episodes of it on the channel and uploading it every day back then, I still don't feel like I understand a lot of what Minecraft is and everybody else, like, fucking Michael's out here building robots that mine for him and he's like five stacks of diamonds because of it and everybody else seems so good at it and I'm like, I don't want to fuck up your server. <laughs> I don't want to be the dumbass in the middle of it being like, oh shit, I accidentally lit someone's house on fire and I don't even know if you can do that. Playing Minecraft with friends is what makes it fun. You need someone to brag about finding five diamonds. <laughs> yeah. Saikuna said Abe will help you set it up corpse too. Oh, that would be dope! I want to play Minecraft with corpse and Saikuno. Because I did say that I want to play more with them. And I... Like, Among Us is one thing that was really fun, but... I don't know. Among Us is a very high-tension game. Like, if you notice... Oh, wait, okay, this music is very loud. I don't know if it's as loud for you guys as it is for me. Um, if you notice, when I'm playing Among Us normally, it's, like, super concentrated, super, like, high tension, like, nerves, like, oh, God, I don't fuck it up. I, I want to win. And then when it came to the sort of improv uh, hide-and-seek proximity chat version, it was like, oh, this is easy. I shine brightest here. And I want more games to be able to do that with that group. Um, because when it comes to, like, detective work and imposter work, um, like, I contribute, but I feel like I contribute better when I'm just able to, like, do my own thing and fuck around and make jokes. I work, I, I operate much better in an improv environment, basically. Um, and regular Among Us people are kind of out to win a lot, so I don't really want to fuck around too much, because then I just become the annoying one. Um, so that's why the hide and seek ones have been so much fun. So I'd, lo I'd leave, even love to play uh, hide and seek proximity among us with them, but I don't know if they're into that. <laughs> Do you think when Dave dies, he goes to the Dave yard? Look, I think that that joke is underrated. People uh, didn't laugh at it, but they also didn't think about it. Where was their like super high tier comedic talent? Huh? When I asked him to actually tell a joke, Dahi had to look one up. Dave just told the same joke I did, but worse. You know what? Dave, your joke's solid. I'll die on that hill. <laughs> the best joke, I agree. It's like uh, Charlie's like board burgers joke. That's a that's a high quality joke that at first I didn't really get, and I kind of like. <laughs> but then the more I think about it, the more I dwell on it, the more I marinate in the sauce of comedy, the more I laugh at it. Dave Yard is S tier joke. Yeah, we should really do a tier list of jokes and see what people can come up with. And then I'll rate them. And obviously put my joke, like, in its own category as God tier. Because <laughs> that's what you do with tier videos, right? If you're in it, you have to put yourself either way at the bottom or way at the top so you don't fall into the list. You killed AOC. She had it coming. She was alive for too long in the round. I actually got her killed twice. I killed her as imposter, um, because I'm bloodthirsty and ruthless like that, and you better watch out, because when these knives start flying, you never know who's going to hit. Uh, but also, as crewmate, I let her live, and then she killed Toast in front of me, and I was like, No. That was a fun round, though. Am I joining the offline TV Minecraft server? No, I don't want- I don't want that thing to happen. 
where people seem to take a lot of Twitch clips these days and upload them to YouTube. Um, and I mean, I'd be guilty. Uh, I, I'm guilty of watching them as well. Um, but there's so many clips these days where so like one tiny thing happens that the people streaming aren't even like aware that they're really saying they're just in the moment and fucking around and then it gets clipped and it's its own thing on YouTube and it gets a million views and everyone starts talking about it that way and I don't want it to be like something gets clipped out of context in these streams where I'm like I'd love to play on their server and then people are like he's playing on it that's it it's happening when I haven't even asked them yet your whole live stream is on YouTube I know I've seen people re-upload entire streams to YouTube. So, I have started a, a VOD channel myself that I'm waiting to put more stuff onto it. Um, but I kind of want it to just be the streams that I... The streams that I don't upload to YouTube, because some of it is like, I play Among Us on stream, and then I turn around and I edit it down and put it up onto YouTube anyway. So I'm like, I don't really want to upload that to a VOD channel. For the whole thing when you can watch it here but also for youtube it's like the edited down version is probably better than the whole vod anyway so the people who are on youtube who missed the twitch stuff or who don't even want to come to the twitch still get it but um demon souls is something that i want to upload there because i'm not uploading that to youtube anyway toast fucking nuked the server and abe had to restart it did he finally nuke it um Chaotic, thank you so much for the 10 gifted subs. I saw him, I saw, again, clips, <laughs> where he was talking about it to Michael, and Ludwig kind of walked in on it, and they were talking about nuking it, and that was like his plan. I didn't know he actually did it, that's funny. Twice? <laughs> God, I fucking love Toast, he's so funny. I'm glad that, um... I'm glad that Among Us did so well for him that I found him through because I've always known about Toast. But he always played Hearthstone when I knew about him, and I just had no interest in Hearthstone, so I didn't know really a whole lot about him. And then the first time I properly met him was doing Carson's 8-ball tournament. Um, and I had a completely different perception of him than I do now, obviously, because I didn't know him. But having gotten to know him through Among Us and playing with him and seeing his videos and everything, like, he's such a funny dude. Every now and then he comes out with this one joke where I'm like, God damn, that's smart. That's funny. Um, so I'm glad I got to know him better through that. That's why I hope I get to play other stuff with him that's not just Among Us. The fake dragon task, <laughs> yeah. See, that's the thing, like, those Bofa... Like, Joe Mama, Dragon These Nuts, Sawcon. Those jokes are so overdone. But he somehow managed to implement it in a way into a an episode that made it, like, a god-tier joke. It's... Because no one expected it. No one was even thinking about it. He's never made jokes like that before that in those videos. At least that I saw. And then it just came out of nowhere. I was like, God damn, that's good. You beautiful bastard. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Liskar, thank you for the prime. Jess Love, thank you for the sub. And I'm glad that I reached out to him at one point, because he, he tweeted something about Among Us back ages ago, and I tweeted at him saying something like, teach me, and then he DM'd me, and we put it together, and then I, I invited, like, Felix and Charlie and everybody in, kind of like to fill the roster so it wasn't just all the people he plays with and not all the people I play with. So we kind of like merged groups. And then it, it kind of springboarded from then and like so many other people started playing together and it's, it's so cool. And then I invited Corpse one time because they needed a fill and I was like, I wonder if Corpse wants to play and added him in. And now look at us. All best friends. It's so fucking fun. I love it. Zesty, thank you so much for the sub. Mikey, thank you for the prime. Well, actually, I think we can, uh... Like, I invited Corpse to those sessions, but Dave invited Corpse to our Mad Lads groups to play some stuff. He played some Rocket League with Felix and Dave, and then we 
we did some stuff. I think we did a, a Mad Lads when we invited a corpse before we played any Among Us or anything together. Oh, it was actually Among Us that we played, but before we were like streaming it and stuff. So really, Dave's the one who got corpse into the group. Da Dave is how I met corpse. I think Dave is how Felix met corpse as well, and by extension, everybody else then. And Among Us is just a really great. Uh... See, Dave is just amazing. Dave invited corpse to the group. So now we all simp. And Dave is also the the instigator for the Dave Yard joke. So, really, Dave is God in my world. We just live in Dave's world at this point. <laughs> um, I forgot what I was going to say, though. Oh, well. It's probably bullshit, anyway. Dave is simp-worthy? I agree. What mic do you use? A Neumann or Newman U87. It's an incredibly expensive microphone that is totally overkill for something like this, but at the time I was doing more voiceover stuff and I wanted a nice mic. Well, I just wanted a nice mic anyway to invest into my channel. Whiskey, thanks for gifting a sub to Maddie. <laughs> Kitties, thank you for the sub. I'm a simp for you, Sean. As you fucking damn well better be. <laughs> how is your room so silent? I mean, have you seen how much padding is here? It's There's padding everywhere. I don't know if you can see it on this cam as well. Yeah, look at all that padding. That's so much padding all over the room. It's all over all the walls. All the way around. Even, like, around the plug sockets and everything. So, you just need... That's the wrong cam. Uh, a lot of padding went a long way, because there's tiled floors in this room, and then just concrete walls, so you can imagine how much echo is in here. Um, no ceiling padding, no. But, it, it helps a lot. Like, there's, there's still a tiny echo in here. But you don't want your room to be too dead. Like when you're doing sound treatment, like this is overkill. It shouldn't be this much. When you want, but the, I'm not, okay. Here's the thing about rooms and sound treatment. You want your room to have a bit of character to it. You want your sound to come through and have a bit of the personality of the room. Usually when you're doing sound treatment for like a recording room, um, there's a reason you pick a specific room to do it in. This room, I did not need the personality of the room. I did not need the, the reverberation characteristics of the room for what I'm doing. I needed it as silent as I could get it because I would be doing um, voice stuff in here. But when it comes to like drums and, and guitars and things like that, some like an acoustic guitar especially, you kind of want the room to give you a bit of character back into the instrument, into the mic. But here I didn't need it. It's the same with like a, a cinema room or something. Like you don't want to deaden the room completely because then you lose any of the the depth of the sound. Um, it just becomes a flat, kind of like dead sort of frequency. There's no bounce back in it. I'm short. Thank you. You spelled your wrong, by the way. Yeah, full anechoic uh, chambers are known to drive people insane as they can hear your own body. Exactly. An anechoic chamber is... Um, it's a chamber where it's so heavily sound treated that you literally can't hear... Like, when you speak, you hear your voice in your own head than you do in the environment. Like, it's so heavily treated that you can hear your own heartbeat. You can hear the blood in your ears flow around because it deadens the sound so much in a room that it's been known to kind of like drive people mad because you're not used to hearing that sort of sound. Mm. 
Not used to hearing your internals? Exactly. Play Raft. We'll play that again eventually. Not today. How has BB been? Really good. He's been extra energetic lately to play around. What are you going to play? We're not playing anything today. This is a, a just chatting stream to chill and hang out and be nice. Attack on Titan Season 4, hyped for it. When is it actually coming out? I do want to watch it. I've watched all the others and I've kept up kind of with the series, so I feel like I should at least finish it out. How's your dirt? My dirt. How's my English? <laughs> How's my Dutch? Absolutely awful. I know very, very little Dutch. Dutch people are too good at English. There's never been like a, a... There's never been like a halfway point. Dutch people are so beyond the halfway point that they're basically just in English language uh, native territory because everybody over there is so good at it. Hot for Domo. I know that one. Would you play Outlast 3? Is there an Outlast 3? I thought it was like Outlast Trials, which is a multiplayer one. Does the whiteboard say something? If not, why not? It does! Oh, it's it's not autofocus anymore. Whoops. It says kinda sus, because I was doing a lot of um Among Us, so it was fun to like step away and just have it say kinda sus in the background. Will I be in another Mr. Beast gaming video soon? Maybe. I don't know. If they ask, then yeah. I'm always down. It's a fun group to play with. Actually, most groups that I play with are pretty damn fun. Any fun Christmas plans? Not really. I mean, we can't really do anything for Christmas this year. I think lockdown is lifting soon in England, but we're still all over the place. We, we've been in lockdown all November again. And I think they probably want to extend it, but Christmas coming up, they're not. Um, so I think... I think we're just going to have a chill Christmas. We'll eat some nice food. Um... I just hang out, me, Evelyn, and BB. Just have a nice cozy day watching movies. When you have curfew over here? I mean, there's a lot of places that still need lockdowns that are not in lockdowns. Stuff got really bad here again when school started up in September. Um, so to try and counteract that again, we've been in lockdown for all of November, but I don't know if it actually did a whole lot. And I don't know if people are really taking it that seriously. Like, we, we go out and we try and do a walk every day for, like, an hour just to stay a little bit active. Um, like, fully masked up. Unless it's, like, sometimes we go for a walk at, like, 1 a.m. And, like, no one's no one's outside at 1 a.m. <laughs> um, but we, whenever we're out, it, it doesn't seem like people are taking it that seriously. Are you doing anything for the Matt Pat St. Jude charity? I, I was, he messaged me about it, but we have our Thankmas one happening not that long after it. 
So, all my efforts were going into that one to get that set up. It's like, there's so many charity initiatives happening in December all the time. I wish them very well with it, though. They have some really cool people joining that. And they're trying to raise, what was it, a million dollars? I wish them nothing but luck. I think it'll be really fun to watch. The music is bomb. That's Bloodborne, baby! I forgot that it was playing, actually. When will you notice me? How about now? Imagine being competitive for charity. That would be stupid. Very. A lot of people like to make it kind of competitive afterwards. People say, well, this person raised this much, and this person raised this much, and you only raised this much. Um, it's awful. Like, the whole point of doing these things is because it's a, a good thing to do, because you want to do them to help people out. If, if you do the, well, this person raised this much, and you only raised that, then it just defeats the purpose of it. Then you're doing charity for clout, and you're doing charity for um, recognition, and, like, trying to bump up your numbers for... I mean, it's, it's the fans who do it. Um... Or people online looking from an outside perspective. But any of us who do these streams, like, none of us are ever competitive about them. Everybody everybody who does a charity event in my book is fucking solid. Will Corpse do a face reveal in the charity? Look. Let's not put any pressure on Corpse to ever do a face reveal. If he never, ever, ever wants to do one, he doesn't have to. I get the appeal of really wanting to see what somebody looks like behind the voice. I remember Charlie used to get a lot of it back in the day, and now Charlie's... It's weird to think about a time when Charlie wasn't uh, a presence that you knew what he looked like, but... Not everybody who... Everybody who doesn't show their face doesn't eventually have to. And it, it would suck if they felt the pressure that they needed to eventually because so many people were asking for it. But if Corpse never wants to show his face, that's perfectly fine. If any of the people who don't show their faces right now want to stay anonymous and never show their faces, that's absolutely fine and everybody should respect that. So I would just be mindful when you say stuff like that. Um, even in a joking fashion, because as the person who isn't showing their face, even joking, if you see it over and over again, it can still seem like pressure to them from that perspective. And I would hate to think that Corpse is... I mean, I, Corpse is a smart dude, and he's, he's well within control of what he's doing. Um, and he sets boundaries and stands up for himself when he needs to. But I would hate to think that he's pressured to show his face. How do you maintain anonymity? Um, I mean, not show your face. <laughs> it's, it's difficult because Corpse also has a very distinct voice. So it's hard to, even if you don't show your face, it's hard when you walk around. Because sometimes I walk around and people don't recognize my face immediately, but when I walk by and I'm talking to Evelyn about something, they turn around and they say, oh, shit! And I didn't think I had that, uh, like, distinct a voice when I'm not in, like, YouTube mode. When I'm not, like, yelling at games or I'm not at the same sort of, like, tone and frequency that I'm at in my videos. When I talk normally, I don't really sound the same. Again, I'm just talking. I'm not, like, amped up and energetic. But people people spot me immediately. Uh, sometimes when I'm... When I talk going by them. Um, so, I don't know. I... For a long time, I thought, Oh, lots of people know who I am. That's so cool. When I go out and about, so many people recognize me. And it really validates what you're doing. And it makes you feel special. And it's like... It's, I can definitely see where some people go off the deep end and develop a huge ego because there is that pull to it to be like, oh man, it's so cool that people recognize me when I'm out in the street and I don't like, oh, I thought only celebrities got recognized and it's, 
it's a very tempting thing to want more of. Um, but since I've been doing it for so long, um, and the channel doesn't really, like, grow at the insane pace that it used to, and there's so many people doing YouTube now, and that kind of thing, like, I get recognized less when I go out these days. Well, also, I'm just out less, I guess, but there's a... It's kind of nice. <laughs> it's nice being able to walk around and not have to... Because it gets to this weird thing that when I'm walking by some people, you can kind of tell that some people are looking at you to be like, is that them? And then you kind of feel like a douchebag for thinking, oh god, are they going to recognize me? Because it's like, who are you to have that sort of mentality? That sort of thought process to think that people outside would recognize you. And then the imposter syndrome kind of like kicks in real quick. And you go through all of these mental gymnastics. Um, but it, it it's so weird when you're out and about that when some you can tell when people know who you are and you can tell when people recognize you even if they're trying to hide it because they're like talking and like looking at you and you can just tell when people are staring at you and it's like i i would much rather people would just come over and say something than like stay behind and like take sneaky pictures and then like talk under their breath about you and like stare at you as you walk by because that's just kind of uncomfortable um, and you have people sometimes that follow you for a long time when you're walking into town or something who are, and I get it because social anxiety and that kind of thing, that they're afraid to come up and talk to you. Um, and I absolutely sympathize with that, but sometimes it leads to people like following you for like 10 minutes. I'm like, okay. And sometimes I just turn around and I'm like, hi, to kind of like break that. But I don't know. It's a hard thing. To talk about without sounding like you're a douchebag. Um, and then sometimes it's concerning because they follow you for so long that they don't realize that you're like outside your house. I'm like, I don't, I don't really want you to know where I live. And I like, I'm fine with people coming up and saying hi to me and taking pictures and anything like that. Well, not so much these days because taking pictures usually means like getting close and whatnot. And I'm trying to keep a, a distance for COVID regulations. Um, but it's, it's just a, a, a strange thing. But I don't get recognized as much these days walking about. And sometimes it's nice to sort of have that kind of calmness when you walk around. That you feel like you can kind of just be yourself. Because sometimes you're at restaurants and people recognize you and you're like, Oh god, how do I eat food again without looking weird? And you want to just be able to like act normal, but then you're aware that people are watching you. It's really bizarre, and it's a hard thing to talk about, because it's like, oh, poor little famous man. You know, it's hard to talk about it without making it seem like you think you're hot shit. Um, yeah, how do I chew? It's like, how many times do I chew? Do I eat my food too fast? <laughs> That's not my straw. That's the handle again. <laughs> uh, but some it is nice when you because it's I I found myself for a while thinking, man, this is great. And when people stop recognizing you as much, it kind of gets in your head, and you're like, oh god, am I irrelevant? Have I become nothing? Do people not recognize me because my channel's shit now? And that, that kind of mentality is dangerous as well. Um, but, like, you, you go through these waves, and I, I think I'm at that point where I'm like, it's kind of nice to have a little bit more anonymity again. To, to be able to walk around and just act like a person again and not have... See, this is the problem with talking about it, because it makes it seem like I'm ungrateful, and it makes it seem like I don't want people to come up and say hi. It's absolutely fine if you want to come up and say hi, and talk to me, and if you watch the channel, and that kind of thing. Like, I have no problem with that. Um, it's just sometimes it can be very full-on. And if you're not in the right headspace that day, like, if you go out for a walk because you want to, like, clear your head, and if people come up to you and talk to you, like, you want to you wanna be nice to people, uh, but you don't want that experience that will probably never happen again to be shit just because I'm in a bad mood.
being narcissistic and being real are two different things. You sound fine to me. Okay, good. Because it's it is very hard to talk about this th these things. Um, but I feel like people know me well enough at this point that I don't think that I'm hot shit. I just I just want to play video games <laughs> and have fun. Ooh. When will I do a face reveal? Never. You're not getting it. Yeah, sometimes you just want a little me time. I can't imagine what it's like to be somebody like extremely famous, like a Justin Bieber or somebody who any second you go out, there's not only people who recognize you immediately, but there's like paparazzi taking pictures of you and shit like that. Like that's, you would feel like a prisoner in your own home all the time. You can't go out without people giving you shit. You can't do anything without people trying to like write a story about it. That's tough. That'd fuck anybody up. I mean, there's sometimes when you say stuff in a in a stream or a video or to in like tweets or something that just gets taken the complete wrong way, and it's like, oh man, I didn't mean it that way. And so I can't imagine what it's like with millions more people doing that. Feet reveal? I've shown my feet many fucking times in my videos. Studio tour? I already did one when I did the Origin PC thing. Not a whole lot has changed. I mean, from that video, I think this monitor is new. Um, did I have the Go XLR in that video? I don't know. But this is usually how I, I do my streams. Game is usually here. Um, my camera's back here. I have this thing to, like, see my camera to make sure I'm, like, in frame and in focus. Um, and then I have, like, chat here. Streamlabs is here for, like, bits and subs and stuff. And then my streaming dashboard is here. So I can see if everything is running okay. Like, the stream is up. It's live. I can see myself. It's not choppy. Things like that. Um, and then this, this is my, uh, third PC monitor. So the, or my third PC, my third monitor for the second PC, because it's a two PC setup. So the HDMI from this one goes into the second PC so that if this computer breaks while playing games, then the second PC is still up and running and the stream still goes. So the second PC handles all the audio and the, the stream itself. And then this, this has become a more standard thing with streamers lately. And I only started doing it a couple of months back. But it means that you can game on this one and the second PC handles all of the encoding and all the OBS and everything. So the game doesn't get laggy or delayed or drop FPS while you're playing because the other PC is handled and handling the stream. So one handles the games, one handles the stream. And it's really handy. But then I have two keyboards set up on top of each other here. So this one goes to this PC and the second mouse. This is main PC and this is the second PC. So... I can, like, switch stuff like the music on Spotify here because it's on the second PC. And then I can um, do the gaming and everything on this one. So it sounds a lot more complicated than it is. Basically, the main PC is just like a console and the HDMI goes out into the second one and then the second one just does OBS. And that's it. But I added the third monitor so I can keep all of that separate. So here I can just monitor all the stream stuff really handy, like right here. You can see that Draco gifted 10 gifted subs. This is 10 gifted subs right here. Thank you so much. And Dude Alton gifted 10 subs right on top of that. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. That's very sweet of you. <laughs> Thank you. So that's a... Now you see where the sausage gets made. Um, but then like OBS and Discord and Spotify and everything is on this one. So that's why it gets a little complicated when I'm playing like Phasmophobia. Because Phasmophobia has in-game voice 
But this mic is going to the second PC, but I'm playing the game on the first PC, so it's not picking up my voice in the game. So then I... I use this. I use the Elgato Wavelink mic, which is a really fucking good mic, by the way. This is basically... If any of you are ever starting streaming anymore, never ever buy a Blue Yeti again. Blue Yetis are garbage compared to this. Um, they're really fine for a starting mic, but this is a mic made by Elgato. It's $150, I think, which is, last time I checked, is the same price as a Blue Yeti. But this one has a uh, built-in compressor in it and a limiter. Um, you can change the... You can see the this thing on the front of it here. Um, hold on. Maybe it's better to show it on this. You can see the front of the mic has a... Why is that not focusing? Has like a dial on it? Whatever. Fuck off. Has a dial on it that you can monitor your your mic gain, your headphone gain, and then it also comes with a piece of software like the Go XLR that lets you switch between gaming audio and music and kind of like balance it all out, what you hear versus what your stream hears. And it's, it's really, really impressive for uh, a mic of that price. So I use this for Phasmo and stuff like that. I just plug it in USB-C into my first PC so that the the main PC can pick it up. So it's not this mic that like Bob and Wade here when I play Phasmo with them. Um, but it's a really, really impressive mic for the price. So I highly, I'm not sponsored by Elgato or anything. I just uh, got one and wanted to try it out to see what it was like. But I really, really like that mic for uh, a starter setup. Because a lot of these ones, like I have a... Obviously, it's not going to be better than this, because this is like a really expensive microphone for like professional audio work. But I have like filters and uh, compressors and limiters and everything on it so that when I talk live, it sounds nice. But the Elgato mic has a limiter and a compressor built into it. So if you scream, you don't peak your mic. And if you talk quietly, it buffs it up. So a compressor basically just makes the quiet parts louder and the loud parts quieter. So it balances it out in like a, a flatter, more even space for volume. Um, and then the limiter stops it from peaking. So if anything goes over the limiter, it'll just cut it off and, and stick it down rather than uh, having your mic like blow out. Like this! Like if I yell, I don't peek my microphone. Um, which is very, very helpful, because a lot of people who use their mics for the first time are peeking the absolute shit out of them. And even some creators now who have been doing it for years just have a setup that works. But they're still peeking their shit out of their microphone whenever they get loud. I'm like, no, there is a way of doing this. Um, but if I record into this mic for, like, a YouTube video, it's a lot quieter because I do post-processing on it. Whatever, that's a whole different... That's a whole different bag of fish. Uh, Mad Ninja, thank you for the Prime. Preet, thank you for the three gifted. Oh, no, not three gifted, three months. Thank you. Real Gamer, thank you for the sub. This is my favorite channel to masturbate to. Hey, appreciate that, thank you. Hope you have my wiki feed open at the same time as well. Uh, Spotted, thank you for the Prime. Mill, thank you for the Prime. Please host meme review. I mean, I would. Felix has never asked. <laughs> what is your opinion on fan bases hating each other like with XQC? Cringe. Mega cringe. It's like people have their favorite sports team and they're like going at each other for which one's better. Everybody's different. Everybody has a different style. Some stuff is not going to be for you. Some stuff is not going to fit the way you like things. That does not mean that you have to go at each other and destroy each other. Just let people do their thing and live their lives and be happy. Finally, no, no November ended. No, 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 it hasn't. You still have a day left. From what I've learned on the internet is that there's a lot of people saying a lot of stuff using a lot of energy that is absolutely unnecessary and pointless. That is not going to matter in a year. But you're, you're burning all of these mental calories to plow through each other, jump over each other, and claw at each other all the time. That it's just, it's so much energy and so 
like, bad for your mental health to engage in that and perpetuate that. Like, obviously, if something is really, really bad and somebody does something horrible, then, yeah. Like, maybe, maybe talk about that in a, in a civil manner, but, I mean, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir on this one. There, some people will go at each other regardless, no matter what I say. It's not like I'm gonna fucking cure the internet, like, Oh, toxicity is cured, guys! Well done! Thanks, Jack guy. But again, the older I get, the more I'm like, Okay, all you're doing is burning yourself up. All you're doing is burning yourself into absolute ashes. When you really don't need to. All of that energy and time can be better spent doing something else, like... <laughs> reading a book! <laughs> Like, work on yourself, and let other people worry about themselves. He's done it, Miss Obama. You're welcome, guys. Clip that and send it around. Toxicity has been cured off the internet. You're welcome. Because <laughs> I, I get where it comes from, and I used to be a very angry... And angry, I was a lot angrier back in, like, my late teens, early 20s. And I still have some of it kind of crop up where something will go wrong, and I'm like, ah, fuck, and I, like, complain a little bit, but then it's like, oh, just relax. Woo, And then it's like, it's gone, and then no one remembers it. It's like, how m Think about the things that you were mad about last year. Are you still mad about them? Does it still matter? If somebody did something wrong on the internet that you don't agree with, like, fine, say something about it if you want. But... Don't, like, stick in it. Don't sit in that, like, soup for so long. You wanna get cooked? You wanna get cooked in that soup? Because that's a good way of doing it. Toxicity will not only... Uh, like, toxic communities will destroy themselves more than anything. And if you perpetuate toxicity, you'll get pulled into that and you'll, you'll melt in that acid. And that vitriol, if you let it. What is this fucking lullaby for Murgo shit in the background? <laughs> now time for bed, babies! It's the same with the, the PS5 versus Xbox Series X. Like, I get it. You, you spend a lot of money on these things that you want to validate that purchase. Um... And that's fine. But, like, saying the other one is garbage and people who buy that one are idiots and calling them names and everything, it's like, ugh, what's the point? You get lost in the sauce. There you go, Sour Patch. Do you want to get lost in the sauce? Fandoms aren't as fun anymore because everyone is busy fighting. Eh. It just depends on the, the fandoms. I think, I think, like, extreme obsession with a particular community is just as unhealthy as any of the, like, bad things in it. Because it's just, it's these extremes that lead to people, like, lashing out and attacking each other. What's up, Ken? Because, uh, like, 2016 on this channel was definitely like the height of stan culture and shipping and that kind of thing and I, it's it's died down a lot since then um and people in this community aren't as ravenous as they were back then which i i'm thankful for i think it's because it's just a a salination point where people are just kind of used to the channel now and it's not a hot new thing and people are just kind of like sitting back and enjoying it now but i also think that i've matured in a way and people who watch me have kind of grown and matured as well, and a lot of the people who watch me are starting to get a bit older. Which I'm very thankful for. Because people who are... Okay, I, I want to get off this topic because I'm just going down a rabbit hole. But people who are, like, obsessed with you, who really want to stand by you and defend you against absolutely anything that comes at you and fight the world in your honor, are also the kind of people that, if you do something wrong, will probably turn on you at a moment's notice because they're so incredibly involved in that thing that everything is taken to extremes, no matter what it is. 
And I feel like checking that for yourself and kind of like sitting back and just enjoying the thing for what it is instead of putting a lot of pressure on it and building it up to these impossible standards is a way healthier thing, is a much healthier thing to do. Don't get me wrong. Being mature does not mean you can't make dick jokes and fart jokes. That is not what actual maturity is. You can, the most mature people in the world will can still laugh at a fart joke. That's fine. Um, I think the emotional maturity of the channel has changed a lot. Natty, did I get you already? Thank you for the five gifted. Are you and Gab going to collab soon? Yeah, we've, we've been talking about it. I want to do something... I want to do a stream with her again. Or like a video or something. I really liked when we sat down and watched, or like, did the Google deep dive and things like that. I want to just sit down and hang out with her and do something. Maybe we'll do uh, a Demon Souls summoning each other playthrough when she's done with it. She's still going through it. I think that would be really fun. Nasty ass, shitting ass. <laughs> Jake, is that you? Your reaction to Little Misfortune. Exactly. <laughs> I love that game. I don't think, no matter how mature you are, that... <laughs> oh, I farted. Shh, little butt crack. Come on, that's funny shit. <laughs> what about Teardown? I have had that downloaded for ages, and I really, really want to do a video on it. It looks fucking incredible. Uh, we saw it at... Was it E3? It was like the Summer of Gaming Festival thing that Jeff did, I think, where they did a trailer for it. It's the game where it's based on voxels, so you can destroy anything in the environment, and it looks so cool. And I've had it downloaded, and I want to do a video on it, so... Maybe I'll record that later today. Yikes forever. Evelyn does a really good uh, Little Misfortune impression. How's your mental health? Like anything, it has its on and off days, but generally pretty damn good. I think I've gotten very good at uh, checking myself whenever I'm about to go into like a bad spiral, and I think that that's half the battle, really. Still, still very hard on myself from time to time, and still get into some bad habits. But look, no, no one's perfect. Brighty! Is that how I say your name? Thank you for the five gifted. That flower man, thank you for the sub. Claudia, thank you for the four months. What's your Christmas wish? Uh, that we get a vaccine soon next year. I miss... I, I miss the world. I miss my friends. I miss traveling. There's some friends that we can, like, see here when the restrictions are a lot... Uh, when they're eased up a bit. Um, but even then, we haven't seen in a while. And especially my friends in America that I haven't been able to see in person for a very, very long time. And I miss it. I miss my friends. It's real missing friends hours out here. Toxic Humors, thank you for the sub. Tree, thank you so much for the 100 bits. I have Crohn's, I'm a walking fart joke. Thank you, Tree. I actually don't know the ins and outs of what Crohn's disease actually is. <laughs> Somebody Crohn's gang? Would you ever make an OnlyFans? Probably not. The only way I would ever do it is if it was like an absolute meme. And it had a reason and then all the money went to charity or something. DB Geek, thank you so much for the raid. Thank you, I appreciate that. Your thoughts on Shadow of the Colossus fan remake? I haven't even heard about it. Uh, Queen of Lights, thank you for the 10 gifted subs. Danny for the 5. Reality, thank you for the Prime. Shadow Reaper, thank you for the Prime. Not Kuya, thank you for the Prime. Hannah, thank you for the four months. 
Uh, Queen of Lights, thank you for the gifted sub as well. Gib, thank you for the 100 bits. I've been starting to hear ringing in my ears. How do you deal with it? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I have constant ringing in my ears all the time. Um, it it gets easier as time goes on, I think. Because you you sort of get used to it after a while. But that, that first year when you start noticing it, it's like, oh god, what the fuck? I have no peace and quiet at all. Um, and I have I have pretty loud ringing in my ears now, but I I had scans done. I got an MRI on my head to see if my nerves were damaged. They're not. They're fine. And I did a hearing test, and my hearing is absolutely fine. So it's more of a perceptive thing than anything. Um, but I wish you the best. There are things you can do to like help with it. Um, there's some stuff online that. Even if it's a placebo, sometimes it helps. Um, but I, I wish you well on your tinnitus or tinnitus journey. Yeah, like even right now I can hear it. If I really think about it. Just wear headphones. It's it's not like that. It's a sound you hear inside your head. It has nothing got to do with outside influences. Will you make cake cups for your coffee? We've thought about... We've looked into, like, recyclable ones or eco-friendly ones that are, like, degradable. Um, it kind of comes down to a, a, an environmental concern more than anything. Because the amount of people using cake cups is not really worth the environmental impact that they have. You can get uh, cake cups that are reusable. Um, that you can, like, grind up the beans and put in yourself and use them that way. And I would highly suggest those ov over us making just straight K-Cups. What are K-Cups? They're the little pods that you put in. They're, they're Keurig machine cups. So the ones that you put in and you, like, close it down and then the coffee filters through that. Uh, but I'm pretty sure you can get reusable ones that you can just grind up the beans and put it in and then close it. I don't know if they're the same, if they have the same quality. Um, I don't use K-Cups myself. I'm more of a, a pour-over guy. What coffee machine do you use? I use a, a burr mill grinder because this is all the stuff that I've, I've learned as I've gone. Um, is that there's a grinder that crushes the beans more so than, you know, regular grinders have, like, the blade in them that spins. But if you have a blade that's spinning, it's more, like, smacking the beans and, like, sending them around and it adds friction and heat, which changes the flavor of them and changes the beans in a way. Um, but a burr mill grinder kind of, like, crushes them more. So it adds less friction to them. So you get more of the actual bean in there without uh, changing it too much. Um... So then I do that, and then I have a... Is it a... What's the name of them? A Hario V60? With, like, a paper filter on top? Um, or you put that in... Um, they're... Well, sometimes I do. I have a reusable one as well that I, I kind of prefer for the same sort of, like, environmental reasoning. Um, but I used to use the, the paper ones. And I, I have, like, a, a metal mesh one that I pour the grounded beans into. And then you, you pour your hot water over that. You're a V60 guy, huh? Only on the weekends. I mean, however you like your coffee is however you like your coffee. I'm not going to be a, a gatekeeper for coffee. That's one of the main reasons we made the coffee brand. Because um, I like... I like a good, decent cup of coffee, more so than, like, instant or, like, any of the pre-packaged sort of stuff. So we wanted to have, like, a... Like, if people want to dabble in a higher level of coffee, then they can. With this... With the coffee that we sell. Um, it's just... It's lovely that it tastes amazing as well. But I'm not going to sit here and be like, you have to do it this way. It has to be absolutely perfect, because... Most people who are going to be getting into this coffee brand won't notice the difference anyway.
Because I'm I'm a whole bean kind of guy. I like get the beans whole and then grind them up myself and then pour over and whatnot. Um, but I, I also just really love the process of that. I really like making my own coffee and grinding my own beans. Feels good, tastes good. But we also sell pre-ground coffee, if that's your if that's your bag. And some people don't have the time to sit down and do everything that way. Do I ever mix alcohol into my coffee? I do not. <laughs> I I do want to try um, this Christmas though. I want to try our hot chocolate mix with Bailey's. I think that that would be fucking delicious. Maybe get some eggnog and hot chocolate. I think Bailey's and hot chocolate would be so good. Oh, we went through the entire Bloodborne soundtrack. Oh. Let's put on this one. I'm really glad people like the hot chocolate mix. It's been really fun seeing people get it and taste it and really enjoy it and have the nice little cup of cozy hot chocolate sitting down in their blankets. I've never had coffee because of my heart condition and that's absolutely fine. I'm not saying you have to be here and you have to get it. I'm just glad that people like it as much as I do. I've had hot chocolate almost every other day. It's so good. Oh. I'm glad to hear that. Make a TikTok on stream. I haven't made a TikTok in ages. <laughs> I don't even have TikTok on my phone anymore. Is your coffee actually good? Yes. And I'm not just even saying that for my own taste palette and what I like, but I've had multiple friends come to me and say that they really enjoy it as well. Multiple people who didn't know it was my coffee and then they drank it because another friend gave it to them and they said it was the best coffee they've ever had and they really wanted more of it. And that makes me proud. I'm happy about that. Especially since some of those people are like real coffee drinkers. Real coffee drinkers. What does that even mean? <laughs> Why would he sell a shitty coffee? Well, that too. <laughs> hey guys, I made this shitty coffee. Please give me money. Oh, what's up, Gimme Milk? I'm glad you caught the stream. Jack, is this all we're doing today? I think so. I'm having a nice chill time. Where's the music? There we go. Maybe this isn't the best soundtrack. It's a lot of like on and off. Do you still play Fall Guys? Not really. I haven't played it since the Twitch Rivals tournament we did. And before that, I didn't really play it that much either. Do you like Oreos? Sure. Oh, 
How tall are you? I'm five foot six. Uh, yes. Okay, Jack, aliens real. Look, listen, all right. <laughs> no and yes. No in the sense that we're not going to find little gray spacemen with big oval black eyes like all those movies. Um, <laughs> oh shit, here we go. All right, chat, listen. Um, but I'm a firm believer that there's some sort of life form out there somewhere. I feel like the, the possibility of that... It's just, it feels impossible to not have anything out there. Like, when you really think about the scope of the universe. The... Ow, fucking hit myself in the eye trying to scratch my own nose. When you think about the countless stars in our galaxy. The trillions. And then you think about the trillions and trillions of galaxies in space. Surrounding supermassive black holes out there. Doesn't it seem a little silly to not think there's at least some sort of life out there? Even like a single-celled organism? A tiny little, like, microbe somewhere on some planet doing something? That feels kind of impossible to not think about. Wasn't there life on Mars? Well, there's a good, um... There's a good sort of, like... That's the word I'm looking for. A good sort of, like, tapestry for it, if we if we go back. Because... ...water on it, and that it was... It was a planet like Earth, but it just got stripped away. Its magnetosphere got stripped away, and then it got burned up and just turned to the red dust that we know it as now. Um, but there is a good... Uh, there's good evidence that, why was evidence the hard word for me to think about? I need more coffee. That there was water there, and that, based on the valleys that we've seen, and... Um... With water, usually comes life. And we have a good understanding of what the prerequisites for life need. Like, the sort of uh, elements that make it up, and what would constitute for life based on what we have here and how we were created in the history of Earth, but who's to say that, like, we don't know everything? There could be a different type of life out there that we don't know about. That exists in fucking pure Mercury on a planet billions of light years away. Yeah, Titan has water. What's the... God, what's the name of the... the moon around Saturn that like, explodes water. Is it Eurydice? No. Is it Saturn? Um... Enceladus. Eurydice. That's the character from Hades. Um... Enceladus is the one that has, like, an under... Underneath the surface is, like, oceans, right? And that it just, like, cracks and it just explode water out into the atmosphere. Yes, euphemism. The 15th moon of Saturn. Um, right next to prophylactic. Um, that, that moon is, like, exploding water out into a squirting planet. Okay, I hate where this is going. <laughs> It, like, explodes water millions of kilometers. Well, maybe not millions. I can't remember the actual numbers. But let's just say millions, because it sounds cool. Out into space. Just ejects it out into space. Has to be something on that. Has to be some sort of, like, fucking microorganism just floating around in there being like, Hey, what's up? Come check me out. But as far as uh, planets where they're playing Fortnite, I doubt that those exist. Who knows? We're a very young civilization. We're not a... what did they call them? A stage three civilization?
There's a planet that rains glass. There's probably a planet that fucking... Rains... <sighs> I'm trying to think back to the time in the stream when I said I was mature. So I'm trying to think of a better word than jizz. <laughs> it it rains. There. <laughs> Chocolate rain. Why not? It rains Tazon days on a planet. We're not even a stage one. That's true. We're not I I don't think we're a full stage one civilization yet. It's raining men, hallelujah, planet. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe it's raining. Oh, uh, no, I said there's no intelligent life. So it is raining men. Am I right, guys? Ha 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 ha. All right, I'll see myself out. We're stage zero head. We're a zero head planet. Yeah, it's raining corpses voice on a planet. Gamer girl, thank you for the 10 gifted subs. Appreciate that. Thank you. You've been so generous. Again, we have a charity stream coming up on the 13th. I would highly encourage people to keep their money for that to put it towards a good cause. It's raining septic eyes. Oh, I hope not. It'd be terrifying. I was watching videos about black holes last night at 3 a.m. In bed. It was a good time. Uda man, thank you for the sub. I'm a robot. Astronaut. Queen Aris and Krauser. Thank you guys so much for the subs. It's raining gamers. It's raining W somewhere. It's raining dubs. It's raining pogs. Why didn't I think of that one? Yes, pog planet. It's raining pogs for sure. Are you excited for Christmas? I'm more excited for the sort of vibe around Christmas. People are always nice. Or nicer, and more generous in giving, and you get to watch Home Alone. It's very fun. Do I like rice? Yes. Clip that, and send it around. Yes. I like rice. Jacksepticeye exclusive. Never done before. Uh, Annalie and Lucian, thank you for the primes. And Shizzle, thank you for the prime as well. Headlines tomorrow. Write that out! Isn't that a Cloak Brand hoodie? Sure is. Cloakbrand.com, Cloak? That sure is. Uh, Pitor, thank you for the Prime. And Sly for the Prime. And Alex for the Prime. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Do you like rice pudding? Absolutely. This is your dead mom, and we're gonna burn her now. I can't unhear a uh, girlfriend reviews version of that song. Oh god, there was a crack, or I thought I had a crack on my phone. It was just a hair. Um, give me one second. How are we doing today? We're doing good! How are we feeling, chat? You feeling good? Feeling strong? 
Owen, thank you for the sub. Closing, thank you for the prime. And Roop, thank you for the sub. Jam, thank you so much for the two months. Sleepy, tired, feeling fucking poggers. Let's go. Where are we going? It doesn't matter because wherever we're going is a good time. Uh, Melrose and Kid, thank you guys for the primes. And it's me, Jackal. Thank you for the prime as well. Lots of pogs in chat. Okay, good. People are feeling definitely pog. Whether they're feeling and champ? I don't know. Who wears cloak better, you or Mark? I think we both wear it equally well. <laughs> the cloak wars are over. <laughs> Nature is healing. Jovi and Silverstorm. Think of the Prime and the Sub. <laughs> Dye your eyebrows green. That's more hair than the top of my head. Do a backflip. Jacksepticeye breaks neck on stream. Chat says Pog. You feeling cold? Well, heat that shit up, bro. Get it going. Chat too fast, no one cares. Well, I have special eyes that I can read it with. Are you gonna play any games today? Nah. It's nice to just sit back, have a non game day. Even sports people have non game days. Sean, is your camera tilted? I fixed it a little bit. This this red light is actually broken. It's actually bent, so it looks worse. How long is your hair? Yes. You sipping on that top of the morning coffee? I was until it all vanished and now I'm sad. Did I ever finish The Witcher 3? I did. Uh, way back in my own time. I, I played it, got burnt out, and then took... I don't think I played it for like five months. And then I went back and played it again. Just to say that I finished it. I like the, the last area of the game. The one that's like... Uh, rocky sort of... Mountains. All little pockets of islands. I think that's cool. Reminds me of Ireland. Skellige? Yeah. I think it's... I think it's uh, modeled after Ard Skellig. Um, Ar is Ard Skellig the place in that? It is Ard Skellig. Okay. Well, then I'm wrong. Ard Skellig is the fake place. Wait, now I'm confused. There's an article by Eurogamer called The Irishness of Witcher 3's Skellige. There you go. But it, it reminds me... Skellig Michael is uh, a place in Ireland. And we have islands that are basically just that. Is Skellig Michael the one that they film a bunch of stuff at? Like Star Wars and stuff? Can't remember. Uh, but that area is cool. Are you going to play AC Valhalla? I tried. I started it. I got like hours in. Maybe played it for like five to eight hours. And it's fine. It just doesn't. It's, it's even less like an Assassin's Creed game. Which again is totally fine. If they want to make something else completely different, that's fine. I just wish it wasn't an Assassin's Creed game. It kind of feels like it's Assassin's Creed just in title. Um, and it's still fine for what it is. It's just, I I miss the really old Assassin's Creed game. So I went back and played Unity again. 
because on Series X you can play Unity at 60 FPS now. I got the disc version of it and didn't update it, so you can play it at 60 FPS because they patched it to 30 later. Um, and that's such a good game. I, I gave it such a hard time when it came out because it, it had so many bugs and it was so broken and the performance was crap. But now it was really fun to play because it has it has the best parkour in the series when it's actually parkour and not just climbing and running. Like, there's a difference between just climbing and actual parkour. And it's... It's the most I've ever felt like an assassin playing one of those games. The crowd density is absolutely huge. There's a later mission in the game where there's hundreds and hundreds of people on screen and you just kind of have to, like, sneak between them and kill someone in the middle of it, and that's really fun. Um, and it really... It really makes you feel like an assassin. It kind of feels like... Uh, Unity is feels like what they really wanted the Assassin's Creed formula to be, but it got such a backlash when it came out that they really had to change it, so they did Syndicate and started to merge more into the RPG elements. And then Origins came out and it completely revamped the series. But now that we've had three of the ones that are not like the originals, I kind of wanted to go back to that playstyle. They're like... I like the social stealth of it. I like when you're in a very significant period of human history and you're going around the historical landmarks and the historical parts of that time, meeting historical figures of that time. Like, you meet Napoleon in that game. And some of the other ones, like, you meet Da Vinci and you meet... Um, like, the, the newer games, it doesn't feel like a significant part of history is happening. It's kind of like, oh, you're a Viking and you're just pillaging England... It's like, I don't care about that. I don't want to do that. Um, and Unity tried out, like, proper global illumination back in the day. Or maybe not proper global illumination, but it tried to have some really high-end lighting. And at some times, it's still the best-looking Assassin's Creed game. Um, the level of detail and the draw distance is kind of crippled by that. But, I don't know, some of the lighting in that game... I know I talk about lighting a lot. Shut up, leave me alone. It's fucking awesome. It just has a really great vibe to it. I like sneaking through crowds of people and, like, subtly stabbing a dude and walking away, and then everyone's like, Oh my god, who did it? Makes you feel like a badass. Whereas Valhalla's like, Oh, let's raid this monastery and just go in fucking guns blazing. Axes blazing and just... Devour everybody. This doesn't feel the same. Again, they're trying to do different things, and that's fine. It's just, I prefer Assassin's Creed when it was about that, like... Because Unity is about the French Revolution. Assassin's Creed 3 is about the American Revolution. Assassin's Creed 2 is like the Renaissance. It's like, I like those specific periods that are like a big cultural thing happened and you meet some of the key figures of that time and you're like, you're this like small cog in this massive government machine, but your small cog makes such a big difference in this huge scheme that's happening. And you like overthrow the government kind of thing. Like that stuff's fun. But I, I do think that the parkour system in it is the best it's ever been. The animations in it are the best animations they've ever had in an Assassin's Creed game. And it's weird to say because it's... Like, Syndicate, Origins, Odyssey, and Valhalla all came out after it, but it still does some things better. You can tell how much effort they put into the animation systems. It's just a shame that it didn't get the love back then. And that's fair because it was a buggy mess. That's where we got that image of, like, the big eyes and the mouth with no face. Assassin's Creed meme. But I really liked it. I still think 2 is my favorite Assassin's Creed game, but 2 also has a lot of those, like... There's a lot of stuff that's wasting your time, like... A lot of menus and a lot of, like, walking with people and shit like that. Unity kind of got rid of that. It's like, you, if you just want to do the main story, go do the main story, and nothing really holds you back from it, except your own patience for the missions of, like, stealth. Because it's kind of hard to fight your way out of situations in that game. Um, but the later games are, like, even, like, Black Flag, or the earlier games, Black Flag had a lot of, like, okay, follow this character and walk behind them. It's like, okay. Eavesdrop on these guys and walk with them. Like, oh, okay. I just like to get stuck in. I did really like Black Flag, though, when it came out. I really liked the ship parts of that game. Witcher 3, though. I really love the world of The Witcher 3, but I hate the controls of that game. 
I I really want like responsive, fast, like Batman Arkham kind of combat. And it, it just feels a little sloppy sometimes. And controlling Geralt kind of feels like you're controlling a boat sometimes. And they tried to fix it when it came out because it was even worse when it launched. It just feels like I'm spinning my sword a lot and enemies attack me and my dodging doesn't have enough, like, iframes to get out of it, if iframes at all. I just really want to feel badass. Because the combat's not that complex in that game. But it just feels sloppy. But the missions, the, the quests, and the world, and the items you get, and all of that is wonderful. I love that stuff. I love just walking around in that game and getting on Roach and going through the forests and stuff, and the monsters are really cool. They play Red Dead Redemption 2? I did. Kind of had some of the same issues where... Uh, the mission design is not great. Um, and sometimes the controls are a little too realistic for my liking. But they really suit that game, so I'm kind of at odds with it. I think if they tightened up the controls and made it really snappy, then it just looks wrong. And it doesn't make any sense for that game. So if you like it, that's fine. But for me, I kind of got tired of it after a while. Maybe I'll go back to it and try it out. When Now that I'm not uploading every single day, twice a day. And I have more time for myself. Painting while I watch? Oh, that's fun. What are you painting? Ronald, thank you so much for the eight months. Problem with Valhalla is too much filler quests, uh, but the game was okay. Yeah, it's not a bad game. It's just not really what I want. And I really don't care about the characters in it. I feel like the characters are a bit lame. I think maybe that's why I like Unity, because it felt kind of like Assassin's Creed 2 again. Arno kind of felt like Ezio. Not as good, but he still felt like a fun character. A larger-than-life character that kind of, like, falls into the Brotherhood and then learns more and grows as time goes on. I like that stuff. With Eivor, it's like, oh, we're a Viking, and now we just go... Because the game starts off weird. The game starts off, like, this is not really a spoiler, because it happens before the actual title screen even plays on the game. But it's like somebody comes and attacks your village, and then... You grow up, and you go back and attack them and kill them. And then the title screen happens, and then it's like, Oh, we're just going to England to be assholes now? Like, I know Vikings were assholes, but I kind of feel like... I need a bit more than that. I'm just... I just went to England and started, like, destroying their villages and stealing all of their stuff to build up my own settlement there. I'm like... I don't care about that. <laughs> that's Viking shit. I mean, true. But that's not... Like, I don't relate to that at all. The world in the game looks gorgeous, though. Evelyn's been playing a lot of it in her spare time, and I've looked over at her, like, synchronizing a... a, a location in, like, the south of England. There's massive, like, golden fields with snowy mountains in the distance, and that shit's really cool. I don't relate to pillaging. As much as I like to promote that I'm a Gaelic gladiator and all that. It's just memes, lads. I don't actually like going out there and destroying villages and killing people. I know. Big news. Hot take. Exclusive right here. Odyssey had the same problem. I really wanted to get into Odyssey. Cassandra's a fun character, but it's just... It, there's, it's too much. It's too much game. And I hate that it gates off certain missions. It's like, you need to be level 21 and you're level 16. It's like, well, why did you give me, like, a level 48 mission that I can't go do? Because when I walk in, I just get one shot by everything. And it just forces you to go out and do all the shitty side quests that are like, Oh, my... I don't know. This guy wants to kill me. It's like, okay, I'll go talk to him. And then you talk to him, it's like, oh, I have to go over to this place. And then you just go back to the person saying, like, Cool, I did all of this for XP. I do not give a flying fuck about anything that's happening in this game. <laughs> But I do like killing the... I, d I do like killing. I just love killing. 
Um, there, clip that. Um, I like going after the cultists in the game. Because that feels like old Assassin's Creed. About two hours late, don't cancel me. Sorry, Chris. The drums of cancellation have sound. Thoughts on the Mass Effect remaster? I do want to play those on stream. That's going to be fun. I love the lack of context. <laughs> it's all you need on the internet is a lack of context and post any clip and then it's true. High hopes for Cyberpunk? God, I hope it's good. Please be good. I'm, I'm so excited to have like a new RPG game like that and the world looks cool. I hope it's good. You quietly playing music in the background? I'm playing God of War. Is it too low? Pump it up a little bit. When's the next raft stream? We haven't decided on a day yet. But probably sometime this week. Maybe you're too loud? Pfft. Any of you here on this stream right now have never said that. You know what you got yourself in for. You jack septic sluts. <laughs> that should be our uh, community name. Bloodborne livestream again? Soon. I do want to do Bloodborne. Entirely. I keep starting Bloodborne on streams and then not finishing it. But now I stream more. Um, so I... I feel like I'll commit to it a bit more. Ah yes, the septic sluts. That doesn't have a bad ring to it, honestly. I just like pancakes, thank you for the prime. As well as sassy dragon and plasma. Wolf, thank you for the three months. Five total, wow, thank you. Court of Reeds, thank you for the three months. The septic shits. Don't put yourselves down like that. You guys are sluts. <laughs> Uh, Azik, thank you for the tier 3 sub! Damn! Tier 3 out of your mind! I hate it here. Me too, Chris. You know when something happens, like the community all jumps in and like helps out a thing and it's like... The septic community are here. And now it's just like... Ding ding, septic sluts, let's go! <laughs> Ba ba slut raid. Okay, this joke has gone too far. <laughs> One true scrub. Thank you for the prime. Zakri, thank you for the prime. No oh God, what have I done? Slut gang? Oh, no. What's the hardest Bloodborne boss? Probably Ludwig. Ludwig the Accursed. Um, hardest boss and the coolest music. Because, well, his first phase more than anything. His second phase is a lot more predictable and easier to maneuver around. But that first phase, oh boy. <laughs> I see those Lud 7s. That first phase is... is hard. Because I understand the phase, but there's a couple of attacks that the hitboxes are just fucking broken. <laughs> I've never read the word slut in chat so many times in my life. Yeah, and without it getting banned too. Ring the bell for the septic sluts? No, because then it legitimizes it, and I am not doing that. Hmm. 
<laughs> Ludwig, does the boss bloviate? <laughs> Uh, the Irish Zombie, thank you for the sub. I'm in the moment, thank you for the four months. And Heroic, thank you for the six months. Sava, thank you for the Prime. Appreciate you, thank you. Bleak and Shifty, thank you guys so much for the Primes. Slut Cult. Oh god, no! Please, god, no! Unique Blaze, thank you for the Prime. Clow Clow, thank you for the sub. Cyber Slut 2077. <laughs> I'd buy that one. I think we all would. Uh, the Lady Crusader. Just Chelsea. Danger Zombie. Ninja Wolf. Gem Cutter. Afogato. Ooh, Afogato. Uh, Kaze. Not a cat. Unique Blaze. Oh, I got you. Uh, Gabo Nation. Jack Slate. That's very close to what we were just talking about. Thank you guys so much for the primes and subs. Appreciate that. And resubs. Thank you. How's the cat? He's great. It's winter time, so he's starting to puff up. He's starting to get like that real, like Maine Coon kind of uh, coat on him now. And he's like, he's just, he's all, he's got like his little tiger mane. Starting to get poofy. It's very cute. But then comes uh, springtime and he'll start shedding like a fucking alpaca. <laughs> but God, do I love him. So nice to have a, a cute little creature walking around your house. He's so much personality. Does he like cuddles? Oh, more than any other cat I've ever seen. He like come and just in the mornings he'll come and like lie on Evelyn and purr so loudly and just fall asleep. He's like, where were you guys all night? I was sleeping and I woke up and you guys were gone. Um, he's precious. Mine just woke up from anesthesia, such a brave little boy. Oh, no. He trying so hard. I hope your, your cat journey is going well, Camilla. It, it, cats take a long time to get used to stuff and to acclimate and they get... Uh, again, they have so much personality, so they kind of like shift in between habits every now and then. BB has these times when he'll like, he'll just kind of wander around for a while and he'll like, he like test the boundaries of things a bit and then like a week later it's all gone and he'll be super cuddly and then another week later he'll just be doing something else. They're just like little people. And I think the older they get, the, the camera they get as well. Uh... Woolen, thank you for the 10 gifted subs. And Alyssa, thank you for the 5. Parker, thank you for the 2 months. Girl Cat Love, thank you for the sub. Nero, thank you so much for the 100 bits. Just start finish running 4K. I'm tired, please praise me. That, honestly, I'm not praising you just because you said that. 4K is a hard thing to do. Even when I was, like, working out heavily, um, getting to 5K was, like, a huge accomplishment. So, well done. 4K is no joke. Okay, for any of you fucking... Stinky, not metric people. It is 2.4 miles. That's a heck and run. Stinky America gang. 
stinky metric. Look, I I will assert metric dominance over your imperial asses. Even though UK is fucking bizarre. It's like we measure stuff in stone. Metric just makes the most sense. Uh, Kicks, thank you for the Prime. Chan, thank you for the Prime. Manny, thank you for the Prime. Sybil for the Prime. Thank you. Metric for the win, yeah! That's what we talk about in the Septic Slot community. Metric versus Imperial. Yeah, we're mature. This conversation's come full circle. Texas says no to metric. Texas tends to say no to a lot of things. But yes. To amazing food. God, Texas barbecue. Oof. I could go for some of that right now. We just chilling today, Jack? Sure are, mop head. Vendrath, thank you for the Prime. Double D3, thank you for the Prime. How about Mr. Beast hashtag thank Miss Huh? I'm working on it. He's called chat Mophead. No, their name was Mophead. <laughs> uh, Mr. Cobra, I think of the Prime. Super Galab as well. I owe you H-O-H. Thank you for the tier 3 sub. Damn. Thank you so much. Where's a good place to visit in Ireland? Right now, uh, nowhere. Be safe. But when traveling is allowed again, I would say Galway. Galway or Kerry, specifically the West Coast. Not just Galway Town, but like go along the shorelines. Anywhere from like the Galway Coast down towards the Kerry Coast is all really, really nice. Hey, Bread Hero Dad, thank you for the five months. Five daddies. Thank you. That's five months of being a septic slut. Thank you, Bread Hero Dan. A bit rainy? Well, I mean, you go to Ireland to experience that. You hear so much about it as a joke that you don't go there expecting it to be nice. I mean, if it is nice, then God bless. But... I mean, you kind of go there for that rainy atmosphere, right? I'm on one year, ew. You shut your mouth, Chris. You shut your mouth and you, you, you experience that year here on Twitch. Rain is nice, though. It is. I think growing up, I was always told that it was shit, because... I mean, it's Ireland and it rains all the time, so you can't get anything done. But, I like a nice rainy day. I love rain in games as well. It's nice and cozy here in the, the little bitter patch. Thank you, uh, Catastrophe, for the, the Baba Booey. I appreciate it. I remember PJ keeps has a thing that's Bobby, baby, Bobby, booby. And I kept hearing him say it. 
I was like, I know that from somewhere, and it was driving me insane. And then I checked out one of his streams the other day, and it was the... He had a clip of it, and it was the principal from Sabrina the Teenage Witch. And I was like, oh my god, that's what it was from. And it was driving me nuts for so long. <laughs> PJ! <laughs> Hi, PJ. <laughs> Bobby, baby, Bobby, booby. <laughs> oh, perfect timing. But it, um, it drove me crazy trying to figure out what it was from. And even trying to look up the clip, PJ, I couldn't find it on its own. But I remember the principal. He's like looking at himself in the mirror or something when... Doesn't he have like a spell on him to think that he's... To like give him confidence that think he's really handsome or something like that? It's so good. I blame PJ for me saying that. But it, it made me reminisce about my childhood watching Sabrina the Teenage Witch. I still remember the line in Sabrina where they're making bunt cake and the teacher says that we're making... I think she says we're making German chocolate bunt cake or something and she says it's bunt cooking Freiduck. But she says it in such a weird way that it's always kind of stuck in my head for some reason. Out of all the lines in that show, I don't know why it's that one. It's like, it's bunt cooking Freiduck! It's bunt Friday! I'm like, why, why brain? Why? Think about anything else! See you later, Captain Cuckoo! Terrible Tiny Turtle, thank you for the 3,000 bits! Love you, Jack, have some bits. Looks like bits back on the menu, boys! Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, Blobfish, thank you for the sub. You more draws, thank you for the sub. And Lisa, thank you. Uh, Vine, thank you for the sub. Gillespie, thank you for the two months. I also remember a line from Sabrina where she make uh, the kid that she's babysitting an adult, but he acts like a kid, and to like reverse it, she has to say the thing backwards, so she's like, be a big boy, be a big boy, and then she says, boy big a bee. Or boy a big bee, I think she says, and I'm like, that's not the sentence backwards. It should be boy big a bee. Where do I remember this? I can't remember who was doing wires and then got murdered by somebody coming out in Among Us, but for some reason I can remember fucking Bunt cooking Freiduck in Sabrina the Teenage Witch from when I was a kid. Thanks, brain. Real appreciated. If we could just concentrate on the task that we're doing right now, that'd be lovely. Jody, thank you for the 100 bits. Just to add some more bits to the menu. Oh, a nice sprinkling. Just pepper them on there. It's storing that vital memory for something important in the future. Yup. I kind of want to watch Sabrina again. I used to love that show. And Sister Sister. I feel like I'm one of the few people that I know in my close personal life that has actually even heard of Sister Sister. TN Tamara. Love that show. Sister. Sister. Never knew how much I miss you. Da, da, da. Sibling synchronicity. Ah, oh, what a good fucking intro song. They get up into all sorts of hijinks. Pretending to be each other. It's like, is that Tia? No, it's Tamara. Ha <laughs> ha! It's like, how could you not tell them apart? Even I can tell them apart watching it as an outside observer. Fucking idiots.
Marpec, thank you for the five gifted subs. Appreciate it. Spadicey, Twitch, Real, Hotel Travago. That's how Raven was better? Okay, you take that filth out of your mouth. Can we all agree, though, that Keenan and Kel was fire? Kel loves orange soda. Keenan and Kel had that, like, pinky and the brain sort of vibe to it. I fucking love pinky and the brain. Nerf! What a wonderful childhood. What a wonderful childhood for TV shows. And now Keenan and I was on SNL all the time. Me searching up all the shows. Oh, you're in for a good time. They're bringing Animaniacs back. Oh, I can't wait. Wait, is Animaniacs back yet? Or is it still coming out? Because I really need to watch that. It's now on Hulu? Ow! Fuck off, Hulu! I can't get you! We were looking at movies to watch last night, and we found Pam Springs with Andy Samberg in it, and I had never heard of it before. It looked super funny. I was like, oh, it's on Hulu. Cool, can't watch it. Fuck's sake. I want to watch it. Maybe there is a way of watching it. There's like some service that I can get like Hulu shows through. But I just I want to be able to like just buy it and watch. VPN. Uh, well, sometimes the VPNs work to get into the service, but then they reject my card because it's not an American card. It's like, your address has to match the location, blah, blah, blah. Is Hulu not in the UK? Not that I can find. Maybe it is? Either way, it wasn't a simple case of just going on the internet and being able to, like, buy it on Prime or the Microsoft Store on the Xbox or something like that. It was just annoying. I don't want to watch Animaniacs. I used to love Animaniacs when I was a kid. Fucking Maurice LaMarche, Rob Paulson, two of my favorite voice actors of all time. So good. You use my Hulu account? Oh, I'm a I'm gonna make some weird shit. It's just annoying when you, like, want to give these services money. It's like, you're doing this because you want Moon Mooney. You have exclusivity over it. And you want me to give you money to do that. I want to do that. Let me do it. And then it's like yelling at my screen and Evelyn's like, oh, there he goes again. Boomer Jack. And then I turn around and I'm like, it's, it's the kid's fault. It's the kids' fault and the, the corporations. Uh, Crystal Wise, thank you for the sub. Say Roar, thank you for the sub. Bifrost, thank you for the prime. Eva Rev, thank you for the two months. It's time for Animaniacs. Doo -doo -doo -doo. <sighs> Animaniacs was one of those shows that was a lot more adult than it looks on a surface level. Um, and I, I appreciated that as a, as a kid, because it felt like the show wasn't dumbed down for me. A lot of shows back then, even as a kid, I'm like, oh, I wish this was a bit less silly. Like, I liked Drake and Josh when I was a kid, but sometimes the whole, like, Megan 
stuff. It was like... Uh, it just felt like a little too silly for my liking. My big kid brain was like... Uh, yes. Dear Kel, I know that you love orange soda, but what else do you love? What are your hobbies, Kel? Like, what are you into? You love orange soda, but you're a you're a three-dimensional character that needs to be expounded upon. So what else do you like? Do you like follow following Keenan's instructions? Fair enough. But what what gets the the Kel clock ticking? That was a hard sentence to say. And I would just sip on my my bourbon as a child, being like, mm-hmm. Now, Animaniacs, now that's real shit. They're zany to the max, and they know it. Rugrats were my second fave. Rugrats is one of those shows that I loved as a kid, and the older I got, the more the art style kind of freaked me out. You mean two-dimensional? Uh, yes. <laughs> Grew up watching Bugs Bunny? Now, Bugs Bunny is real shit as well. Just some shows have the, the just the oversaturation point, kind of like a Big Bang Theory, where it's like the first few seasons are fine, but then you kind of just double down on all the tropes that the characters have, and you just keep doing those over and over and over and over again until you like run it into the ground. So they stop being characters and they start become caricatures. It's like just kind of got a little stale after a while. Hey Arnold freaks you out. Hey Arnold was weird. Why has he got a football head? And as a kid, I didn't understand it because we were like, "What's up, football head?" And I'm like, "But football's around." It's like it wasn't until I was older. I was like, "Oh, an American football." Oh, I didn't know what that was. What's it called? Him football head is fucked up. Why did they call him that? That's so mean. <laughs> Damn. It's like, coming up to me and be like, what's up, potato face? Like, oh. Ow. That was a good show, though. Static Shock. Dexter's Lab. Oh, man. Can we all agree the Cartoon Network was better than Nickelodeon? Can we also go back and clip the part where I say we shouldn't go against each other and shit on each other? But fuck Nickelodeon! <laughs> I think Nickelodeon have some good shows. Um, Cause like Doug was on Nickelodeon, right? And Fairly Odd Parents, or am I misremembering? Um, but I remember Cartoon Network felt like, even back then, it felt like Cartoon Network was a, le a lot less childish. Maybe I'm just misremembering what shows were on what. But I felt like Cartoon Network was like Nickelodeon felt like the standard one that I was supposed to watch as a kid. And then Cartoon Network was like the the treat that I got that I wasn't supposed to really watch too much of. Avatars on Nickelodeon, that's true. But again, I didn't watch Avatar as a kid. I watched that like four years ago for the first time. I feel like Nickelodeon was just everywhere. What shows did we have on Cartoon Network? Let's go down this rabbit hole! Cartoon Network shows. We had... Okay, I'm not reading off all of them. I'm just reading off the ones that I like that I watched. Uh, Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Fucking glorious show. Samurai Jack. Over the Garden Wall. I only watched that as an adult, though, so that doesn't count. Um, Dexter's Lab. Young Justice. Fuck yeah. Uh, it does have, like, Adventure Time and... The Amazing World of Gumball. Gumball is incredible. It's so much better than I was giving it credit for as a, an adult. Um, but I only watched it again for the first time, like, a few years ago. I didn't watch it as a kid. Ben 10 I watched. Powerpuff Girls. Totally Spies. Oh, hell yeah. Steen of the Universe Cartoon Network? I never watched it. Scooby-Doo, Teen Titans. Courage the Cowardly Dog. It's over. Pack it up. Clip it and ship it. Ninjago? I kind of like that for the meme, but the Ninjago show was kind of shit. <laughs> uh, Pinky and the Brain. Ben 10 again. Teen Titans Go. I understand it. I don't like it. Uh, 
Regular Teen Titans is better. Teen Titans Go was the kitty one that I didn't like. Uh, the Batman. What was the animated Batman series on? It's the only one that exists in my eyes. Oh, Johnny Bravo. Ha hoo ha. Man, I'm pretty. Bakugan? Come on, guys. Never watched Bakugan. Um, now let's see what Nickelodeon has. All right. The ball is firmly within Cartoon Network's court. Let's see if, uh, see if Nickelodeon can handle this serve. There's a bit of a spin on it. See if they can send it back. Um, oh, are you afraid that the dark was Nickelodeon? Oh, fuck, dude. That's a hard one. Keenan and Kel. Oh, I was just hyping up all these shows. <laughs> fuck. Avatar. The Wild Thornberries. Oh, no. Spongebob. Oh, I thought a lot of these shows were not on Nickelodeon. Uh, Doug. Yeah, there it is. Oh, Sabrina was on it. Oh, fuck. Okay, I guess Nickelodeon wins. Damn, I didn't realize a lot of these were Nickelodeon shows. I really misremembered things. The Backyardigans. Oh, my God, the Backyardigans. Oh, no. Oh, this song is cool. It's not the Backyardigans. It's... Oh, anyone British here? What's that... Uh... I think it has Garden or something in the title. Love it. What's that show for kids? That it came out way after I was a kid. Um, it's something like that. I don't know if I'm explaining it well. In the Night Garden? Is that it? Yes, In the Night Garden can go fuck itself. In the Night Garden is a fucking fever dream for kids. That shit is terrifying. Wait, is it In the Night Garden? I think so. That came on on TV one time when I was home from school. Or college. Um, and I, I was like, what do kids watch these days? Instead of like... Um oh god, I can't remember the name of it now. Fuck. Um, but it- it was freaking me out, man. The one with Eagle Piggle? Yeah! Oh, Eagle Piggle is a nightmare! No wonder the world's gone to shit, because kids are growing up on that. Instead of fucking bananas in pajamas. B1, B2. Big, massive bananas to talk. That was far more uplifting. Um, anyway, what else does, uh, Nickelodeon have? Yeah, Avatar, Keen and Kale, Wild Thornberries. It has Legend of Korra, but uh, I'm going to be blasphemous here and say that I don't really like Legend of Korra. I like the first season. Everything after that is a little... Uh, Blue's Clues, never watched. Mm, Fairly Odd Parents, yeah. Invader Zim, oh, Drake and Josh, oh, the Crystal Maze! The Crystal Maze is Nickelodeon? What? Do 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 do. I Carly, Sabrina, Cat Dog. Hmm. Yeah, Nickelodeon had some fucking bangers for sure. You know, what? it's it's kind of even. I feel like they have a very different type of sensibility. Nickelodeon is kind of the safe shows. I feel like Cartoon Network were the ones that took a bit more risk, like Ed, Ed, and Eddie, and Car or Courage the Cowardly Dog. Like those shows are weird, but they're fucking awesome. Cat dog, cat dog. Yeah, cat dog is a weird one in Nickelodeon's basket for sure. Rocco's Modern Life. I've never watched it. Either way, 90s TV for kids was fucking lit. I don't know if they've aged very well, but remember Ren and Stimpy? Oh, Ren and Stimpy had an effect on me. I think Ren and Stimpy and like Courage the Cowardly Dog, those types of shows really opened my mind for what like weirdness and art styles and like the diversity and shit could really be. Because those, like Ren and Stimpy was like never, no two frames were the same. It was all over the place and it was so good. What was Cow and Chicken on? I remember that as well. That felt kind of Ren and Stimpy-ish. Cartoon Network, again, fucking weird. Is 
This is where I find out that it's made by like the same people who made Ren and Stimpy or something. I am Weasel. Oh, and the Angry Beavers? Oh, shit. Hold on. Pump the brakes there, Mr. Man. It looks like we're fucking round in a corner here. David Feiss. Was an animation director on Ren and Stimpy. Yes, I fucking knew it. Cow and Chicken looks the exact same. Cow and Chicken is a spin-off of I Am Weasel. Ah. Rocky and Bullwinkle on Friends. Hell yeah. God. I had a good-ass childhood when it comes to TV shows. I'm very glad I grew up with this really cool thing, and not this super stinky thing that you like. Ha! <laughs> What are people into now? What's the what's the thing that people watch now? What's like the Sabrina the Teenage Witch of 2020? <laughs> We're just watching Animaniacs again. Yeah, the reboots. <laughs> Me? Oh god, that's weird. That's true. YouTubers are basically the TV shows of today. Oh god, no. I've done more damage than any TV show from the 90s could have done to me. Steven Universe? That's that's actually a good example. Although, the start of Steven Universe isn't that recent, is it? My whole computer decided to be like, fuck you, Mr. Irishman. B -b 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 Everyone just watches anime now? That's true. I did watch anime back then, but it was I had to go to Toonami to watch it. And I would watch I would watch Dragon Ball all night. My mother used to work late, so she'd come home at like 2.45 a.m. And I had to be in school the next morning, so I would like get up and sneak and watch Dragon Ball Z. And be like, what the fuck? How's he ever gonna beat Majin Buu? That's impossible. And I'd watch 15 hours of it and still not get to the end of that arc. Yeah, what was Digimon on? Was that like four kids? What was the original one on? Can't remember. Cause that's not on anymore. They they're not around anymore, are they? Fuji TV. Well, it was different in the West. Jetix? Hmm. I mean, like, the original, original, original Digimon. Yeah, four kids. Oh. Are they around anymore? Four Licensing Corporation. Oh. And the kids one is their different branch. Defunct in the 7th of February 2017. On my birthday. When I turned 2017, they peaced out. They were like, fuck it, money's gone. I remember a, a thing about them, vaguely, that something happened with them, that they were like, greedy bastards, and then it kind of ruined the company. But I don't know much about it. I don't really want to get into the... Uh... Oh, I saw something relevant. Not that not the rest of the challenge, cha or the chat isn't relevant, but four kids censored an entire mini arc because it was too violent, because Luffy stuck a flag in a whale's head. Yeah, fuck you, four kids. Weren't they the ones that also changed Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles in England? Teenage Mutant Hi Hero Turtles. Um, because they thought the word ninja had too much of a negative connotation got to do with feudal Japan. I was like, come on. Are you kidding me? So stupid. It's like, oh, it's fine for America. But apparently, no. We're too sensitive in England. Or maybe it was other places, too, but... So bizarre. And that's a lesson. When you try and, like, change things too much from what the people really liked about it and try to censor it and... You know, just give the people the show.
And Kaiba shot people with his fingers? Did they censor that? See, that's the thing. Watching stuff that wasn't censored like that. Like, the the weirder shows, like Courage the Cowardly Dog. It was like, it would technically kind of scare a child. But it was just that sort of, like, broadening of your horizons to, like, let you see the wider world for... I don't know. I can imagine a bunch of people who grew up watching Ren and Stimpy and... Courage and Ed, Ed, and Eddie and those things. Making some sick-ass animations. I think Aaron actually got started because he really liked Ren and Stimpy. And Aaron was one of the guys who, like, pioneered animation on YouTube with a bunch of other people. And Newgrounds was full of, full of people who loved that stuff. And if you censor that shit and keep it away from people, then you don't get cool stuff like that. Courage kept me up at night. I remember being kept up at night because of, uh, Are You Afraid of the Dark? There was one story, or maybe it wasn't Are You Afraid of the Dark, it was something else. Not Goosebumps either. Some kids showed that they were telling a story about a ghost at the end of your bed, and they would, like, wake up and just see a shadow, and I got fucking terrified. I was, like, like, six or something, or seven. I had to go sleep with my parents because I was terrified. <laughs> Anyway, some good shows from back then. Some good ass shows. <laughs> Hi, Key, hate me. Thanks for the raid. How is your speed running going? Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, Hi, Key, hate me was uh, one of the people we donated to in the video that were speed running Minecraft, if I remember correctly. Um, and you were trying to get partnered or affiliated. Hope things are going well. Sean has a crush on Spadicey. And Spadicey has a crush on Jacksepticeye, I'm just saying. I don't want to spread around uh, gossip, but... You heard it here. I was terrified of the Oryx from Lord of the Rings as a child. I mean, as you should be. They were coming to destroy the world of man based on an evil overlord who surrounded himself in fire and a giant eyeball that had a ring that could destroy mankind. Or enslave them. They were monsters. They were supposed to be scary. <laughs> I'm scared of them right now. I was terrified of Spongebob himself as a child. I, he's a weird design. Um, I need to rewatch Lord of the Rings. Oh! Sophie, I have... I don't know if it's delivered yet. I have the 4K HDR version that's supposed to arrive today. Oh. It said arriving today. And I didn't dispatch yet, and now I go to it, and it says arriving Sunday, the 20th of December. Oh, no. Oh, it's like three weeks from now. Oh, God. What happened? Fuck! Me and everyone were like, oh, we get to rewatch them, because they changed the color grading on them. They... The original Lord of the Rings theatrical version had way more color in it, and then the extended editions that came out, or the Blu-rays that came out, I think, uh, color graded them differently, so a lot of scenes just have the same sort of color palette across a lot of them, and it keeps the movie kind of the same color palette throughout the entire thing. But the re-releases of them, the 4K HDR ones, have the original color scheme back in it, which is way more colorful than the original. Like, the clouds, or the, the sky and the clouds are actually, like, blue and bright white, and the grass is actually green and not, like, a... I mean, it makes sense why they, they color graded it differently, because it's, like, basically, like, apocalypse times in that world. Um, I was looking forward to playing, or to watching that, though. What's up, Vicky? Yeah, we're still going. 
for a little bit anyway. But it was like the theatrical and the extended edition were coming out. It was like £75 on Amazon, and they were releasing The Hobbit as well, but... Man! It was supposed to release the 30th of November. Huh, I wonder if there's any news as to why that got changed. That stinks. Maybe it's just Amazon. Maybe you can buy it somewhere else. Cancel that one. I want it. I feel like it's going to be in high demand, though. Oh, some people are saying they received theirs today in the UK. No, I'm just a stinky. Fuck. That blows. So much for Irish luck. Doesn't exist, guys. It's a fucking lie. I mean, I'll get it eventually, but... That'll be my Christmas movie. Me and Evelyn try and watch Lord of the Rings at least once a year. If not twice. Stinky no no. Can you make a podcast? I've thought about it for a long time. Um I don't know, I kinda wanna just make a podcast with somebody and talk about whenever whatever whenever. I don't know. The Stoic podcast. <laughs> nah, I don't know enough about Stoicism to have a podcast on it. And I kind of don't want it to be a specific thing. Like, it it doesn't have to be like... Hey, we talk about this exact thing every time. Or reorient the podcast around this sort of core tenant every time. If I was to do one, it would just be me sitting down chatting with people and... That's it. That's the only premise. With Mark? I reached out to Mark ages ago about a podcast. Um, and said that, it, like, two years ago, said that I wanted to make one with him. What about Troy? Troy has podcasts with people already. The septic slut cast. No! God, the soundtrack's so good. Um, Kat Grech, thank you for the two months in a row. Trevor, thank you for the prime. Fredo the Frog, thank you for the prime. Shadow, thank you for the prime. Flamadiddle, thank you for the prime. That was a fun name to say. Puppet, thank you for the sub. The Real Hammy, thank you for the sub. Scorby, thank you for the five gifted. Appreciate that, thank you. Um, think I'm gonna leave the stream there. Got some stuff that I have to do today. I have to be... I have a big schedule in like an hour that I have to do. I think now is a good time to go get some food. But it was nice hanging out with you guys. It was nice just sitting down and chatting for a change and not having to play a game or anything. Having to play, uh, not that there's anything wrong with playing games, but you just don't get the same vibe, do you? You don't get the same feeling as you normally do when you're, uh, just sitting and chatting. Because there's a lot of times when I'm playing games and I can't interact with chat and I can't read questions or catch all the subs and resubs like, uh, Svart's, Svart's fan, uh, Raster, Bennett, and Elemental, like, I would have missed all those. So it's nice to just have a stream every now and then where you... Sit and chat. I'm got to dick around with Cartoon Network versus Nickelodeon. My window's open and one of my neighbors is cooking something with a strong smell of onions and garlic. And it's making me even hungrier. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, let's raid Gab. My beautiful, wonderful girlfriend. Who's playing Valhalla, I think, actually. I'm normally never streaming at the same time she is, so it's nice to be able to... <laughs> 
to send the community that way. Um, if you go, join that. Be nice. Be positive. Give a follow if you want. No pressure. Um, and I'll see you guys in whatever we stream next. Uh, I do have a video ready for today, I think. That'll be going up on the channel. On the Chan Chan. Uh, but until next time, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And go fuck yourself, San Diego. <laughs> it's an Anchorman reference! It's an Anchorman!